You're watching Cars.TV. Hi, I'm Greg Gregory, driver of the 44 Chevron B16. Welcome to Laguna Seca. My father bought this car in the early 90s. I've been racing it since 2008. It uh, has a little bit of an unusual and interesting history. It raced Le Mans in 1970. It was one of the two factory entrants for the race. Did not finish. Then it was delivered to uh, Joe Seifert, who was the Chevron concessionaire for Continental Europe and also who provided all the cars for the filming of the movie Le Mans. And this was one of the cars that uh, Solar Productions leased after the movie, it was sold to Jean Sarge, who later on became the principal of Renault F1. He shipped the car to the States in 1971 and did Daytona and Sebring with it. Then it went back to Europe and probably traded hands a half a dozen times as an old race car before it ended up in a driving school in France and then came to the States and my father was the first owner of it. At the time, it had a two liter motor. It now has a 1.8 liter. It's amazingly fast for such a small motor. I just went out there and raced with a Lola T70, two GT40s, a Ferrari 312, and it's a little frustrating to be the small bore guy out there. At the start, I kind of got tranced by the horsepower and uh, they got by me at the, at the start. And then it was just trying to find a way by. Uh, and I never could quite find a hole, but it was a fun race and it was a good race in the front of the pack. Well, this is such a great place. I've got a lot of memories of this track. I started racing via the Skip Barber School and then they uh, ran their race series for eight years on the West Coast. It was headquartered here, so I have a lot of races and memories from this track. And as well, this event coming with my dad back when he was vintage racing. I'd always come to the Monterey Historics then and now Motorsport Reunion and been coming here probably 25 years. It's not very many racetracks that also happen to be in really nice places. <laughs> so, you know, this is also kind of special in that regard. You get to come to the Monterey Peninsula, which is a pretty spectacular place, and, and get to go racing. My name is Bruce Marquand. I have a vintage, historic racing prep shop in San Marcos, California. This car is owned by Russell Hook. He doesn't drive, he lets me drive a car of my dreams. My first time here in the early 80s, probably 80, 81, driving uh, SCCA C production Z car. First time out, great. Making a few laps and go to come in. I forgot to look where pit on was. And I had to drive around another lap, look where, where to get in, drove another lap and I drove in. So that was my first experience at Laguna Seca Raceway. But I was driving for somebody because I, the year before that and the year before that, I worked for him for free. We took the, the car to an autocross. They said, hey, Bruce, you want to get in and drive it? Do a couple laps. So I did it and my times were very close. So he says, well, if you continue doing stuff, we'll let you drive at the end of the season. So that's how I got my start. XJR5, they competed with 10 of them. I think they built 13 chassis. This is chassis number 10, so it was the last one that raced competitive for Group 44. So it's 85, 86. A lot of good drivers drove them. They built this car in Virginia at their race shop based on a stock V12 that's uh, been pumped up as much as you could do custom crank, custom cams, custom cam boxes. Geometry has been changed in the motor a little bit. Fuel injection, electronic. It was noisy. All the tin making noise. 
the, the, you know, you don't realize how insulated a streetcar is. You know, you could get in your Honda NSX and go around like nothing, but you get in the race car, the tires are no good till they get warm. There's sheet metal rattling around. You're going, where's my gauges, right? The steering is awfully hard. So, you know, that's the first time you're in a race car. It's family, you know, everybody around here is so close. You come here and you see everybody you haven't seen for the season or over winter time. And it's like, you know, your cousins, your uncles, everybody's here. I mean, there's there's a hundred people here I saw grow up. They're still here. So what do you do?